Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome back the Medicare Payment Advisory uh, Committee. Neither MedPAC nor its witness here today, Executive Director Mark Miller, is a stranger to this committee. MedPAC is a key nonpartisan advisor with a lot of analytical firepower. There is bipartisan interest in its work. MedPAC issues two reports annually to the Congress. Its March report focuses on the adequacy of payments made to the various Medicare providers. The committee pays close attention to those important findings and has had MedPAC testify on them in past years. The June MedPAC report focuses on how to improve the Medicare program. Improving Medicare, that's the focus of our hearing today. We're at a critical juncture. The program faces serious financial challenges. The Part A trust fund, which was paid out uh, more than it takes in over the past several years, is slated to go bankrupt in just over a decade. The funding needed for the Part B trust fund will be in such an increasing drain on the Treasury that it is sure to crowd out other priorities. According to independent researchers, this important program pays out, on average, three times the benefit it collects from workers over their lifetime. We are in a state of flux in how we pay our health care providers in Medicare. The popular Medicare Advantage program faces severe cuts after several years of the White House delaying the damaging Affordable Care Act cuts. Providers increasingly have their payments tied to performance, whether in traditional fee-for-service or some alternative payment model. The MedPAC June 2014 report addresses a number of policy issues that are key to improving Medicare's viability and future direction. The report reiterates MedPAC's 2012 recommendation to improve the design of the confusing and outdated Medicare traditional fee-for-service benefit for seniors. It also discusses policy options that could help to ensure that the new benefit design works for low-income seniors. MedPAC has outlined a design that brings clarity through a single deductible and uniform cost sharing and peace of mind by capping the amount the seniors have to pay out of pocket. The design would also reduce the need to buy a supplemental policy. Benefit redesign is not a new issue. The, the Bowles Simpson Commission, appointed by President Obama, and the Bipartisan Policy Center have also recommended it. The committee has called attention to it, even devoting a hearing exclusively to the topic last year. At that hearing, I asked witnesses to conduct what I view as the most informative analysis, beneficiary impact over multiple years. The fact that a senior may pay a little more in any given year is not nearly so important as avoiding the years in which a senior may face frighteningly high costs. Any beneficiary who has high costs, such as those that come with a stay in the hospital, would see a significant reduction in out-of-pocket costs. Since we know the majority of seniors will have a hospital stay over a course of their lifetime, some many trips to the hospital, this protects seniors from cost spikes in a year when they are particularly sick. With a mom who relies on the confusing Medicare system, I'm sold. If it were up to me, this common sense change would already be done. Hearing MedPAC's, MedPAC's views on how an improved design can work for low-income seniors further, furthers the discussion. I'm confident that this reform can be done in a way that's, that has net benefit for beneficiaries even as it reduces future expenditures. Listening to those who have concerns, we must continue to work to make this happen. The report also, report also highlights the need to be able to compare traditional fee-for-service, Medicare Advantage, and the accountable care organizations. We owe it to our seniors to provide an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of quality and cost of these options in their area. This effort can also provide vital information to set the stage for more sweeping reforms that further empower seniors and are more responsive to senior health care needs. The report also examines how payments to inpatient rehab facilities and skilled nursing facilities differ for the treatment of similar patients. This, this is a continuation of a robust site-neutral payment policy discussion that has happened over the last few years. The House passed a site-neutral policy back in 2011. In fact, a provision establishing parity between inpatient hospital and long-term care hospital payments was signed into law late last year. This is a topic of great interest to members of this committee and has significant impact not only on health care providers but seniors and taxpayers. MedPAC's work has been instrumental. We appreciate its continued focus. The report looks at whether the method of accounting for expected patient costs or risk adjustment can be improved. This is important because we need to make sure payments to Medicare Advantage plans 
end providers are as accurate as possible. There is a lot of interest in the topic of medication adherence, which means taking medications exactly as prescribed by the doctor to result in better patient health and outcomes. The report examines the extent to which better adherence by seniors reduces overall Medicare spending. Finally, the report discusses possible payment policy changes to bolster access to primary care. But before we hear from Mr. Miller, I want to say that this MedPAC report is not a book that will just sit on the shelf. For many of the issues, it represents an ongoing dialogue. This hearing is a valuable part of that conversation. I look forward to working with the members of the committee and MedPAC to enact policies that make the Medicare program work better for beneficiaries, for providers, and taxpayers. Before I recognize Ranking Member Dr. McDermott, for the purposes of an opening statement, I ask unanimous consent that all members' written statements be included in the record. Without objection, so ordered. I now recognize the Ranking Member Dr. McDermott for five minutes for the purposes of his opening statement.